today on Judge Faith. This homeowner hired a handyman to fix up her house and claims he bailed with a job incomplete. Seven days in a row, he did not show up. There was a, an issue of not having gas money. Again, the truck broke down. He fell off a ladder. But this jack of all trades says he couldn't finish on time because the homeowner kept demanding more work. There's a lot of work that I did that was in the contract that was for gratis work. And later... What's your relationship? We're a couple. Okay, and so... And I work with him. I do the paperwork, the office thing. She's rude and I don't like her. Judge Faith drops the hammer. Let me explain to you how things work in my courtroom. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Catrice Harris is suing her former handyman for $2,965 for breach of contract and not finishing the job on time. Defendant Gary Freilich is countersuing for lost wages. He is accompanied in court today by his business partner and wife, Sharon Ryan. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Harris versus Froelich. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Catrice Harris? Yes. You are suing the defendants Gary Froelich? Yes. And Sharon Ryan for $2,965, a refund for what you say is a breach of contract, a construction contract you hired them to work in your home? Yes, ma'am. And you are countersuing for $1,200 for lost wages, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. Harris. Tell me what happened here. Well, Your Honor, I found the defendant on Thumbtack.com around June 19th. Um, we met. He walked through my home. We listed everything that needed to be done. I gave an exhaustive list of all that I needed, and we narrowed it down to what he could do that would fit my budget. So we clearly outlined all the expectations. There was work that needed to be done outside the home, replacing some fascia board, doing some painting inside the home, removing old wallpaper, painting, removing carpet, and putting down some wood laminate flooring. And it was really important that everything be finished by a deadline, because I had my mother coming in from out of the country and also uh, picking up and bringing my grandmother, I needed the house to be right. What was uh, the deadline? The, the deadline was August 9th. Okay. He stated he could have everything done within four weeks, but there was a window of seven weeks just in case anything went wrong. At the time that we met, I also asked what happens if something goes wrong? Do you do this by yourself? Because I didn't think he could complete it all by himself when we met. And he said that he had individuals that he would hire to ensure that the job was done per our agreement within a four-week time period. Did you all enter into a written agreement? Yes, I have a copy of that May written agreement. May I see agreement. that, please? And what was the agreed-upon price for the work that he would do? $8,000 total. So you say you, that you met him on thumbtack.com. What, what is that website? It's a website where people can advertise different services that range from the painting to cleaning to all kinds of services. Are you a licensed contractor? The, no, because a lot of my work doesn't have necessarily need license. Okay. Uh, so like you do painting this painting and whatnot, you don't need a license for that in the state of Texas. You're only required for electrical licensing. Okay. And plumbing and stuff like that. <laughs> so how long have you been now, doing this? As far this... as the deadline is concerned, let, let, let me, me ask iterate. you something. What's your relationship? We're a couple. Okay, and so I work with him, I do the paperwork, the office things. Okay, so you work in the business yeah. together. <laughs> yes, okay. And how long have you been doing this kind of work, Mr. Froley? All my life, over 30 years. Do you Always. have a specialty or do you do all types of... I specialize in many things. Let me just finish my question. I know okay. you think you know what I'm going to ask. Let me finish Sorry. my question, though. Do you have a specialty in terms of contracting or do you build houses? Mainly remodeling. It's a, a scope of work that I can do. Which is a synonym for renovation. Okay, so, so you do a, you do home renovations. Yes. What was the agreed upon work that you wanted him to do? I needed the fascia board replaced. I needed the whole exterior painted simply because the old paint was fading. Inside, once the outside was finished, he agreed to take up carpet and put down new wood laminate flooring, and I would purchase all of the supplies and material. I believe it was for, tile originally. Yeah, the original um, contract was for tile. Don't interrupt. 
Let her finish, okay. and then I'll come to you and you can respond, okay? Sure. Go uh, ahead. Uh, actually, it was always wood laminate flooring because I bought samples, or it was I ordered free samples and showed those to Gary, and he helped me select what was going to be easier for him to lay down himself. So in the beginning, he was to take up the old carpet and put down the, the new um, wood laminate flooring and also <laughs> remove wallpaper and paint. And we walked through the house so he would see specifically which rooms needed what before we agreed on anything at all. And did you pay anything up front? Yes, I did. I paid half up front, $4,000. I did pay that. Um, I think it's really important to note that the first day that he showed up, he was there for less than two hours, tore down a lot of wood, left it piled in my front yard, which I could have been fined for from the homeowners association. And the very next day when he was to return, his truck broke down. His truck broke down four or five times over the span of six weeks. Was there an issue with your truck breaking down four or five times? I did have issues with the truck, but I still made it to work. Seven days in a row, he did not show up. There was a, an issue of not having gas money. Again, the truck broke down. He fell off a ladder. He sustained heat stroke. All of this while he was inside, not able to work because he didn't feel well. And Sharon let it be known accidentally that he was doing work on their home and other people's homes as well because I lived a little too far for them to drive to get to my house. He knew where I lived when they signed the paperwork. If it was too far, they shouldn't have agreed to it. Coming up, Judge Faith puts on the pressure. I want you to answer the question I'm yes, asking. I'm asking for the reason why you didn't show up for several days in a row. Well, I have- I, I was have answering a... the question. No, you weren't. Plaintiff Catrice Harris says that after paying the defendant the full $8,000 to fix up her property, he failed to complete the work by the agreed upon deadline. Defendant Gary Freilich claims that the plaintiff kept adding additional work, which prevented him from fulfilling their contract. Were there a number of days in a row where you weren't showing up to her home? Yes. Okay, what was the reason? This contract was extended a lot. We gave her a lot of additional work. In her own letter, she says we were going to throw in no, a lot no, of No, no, I want you to answer the question I'm yes, asking. You're jumping ahead to additional work that you claim she wanted to have done. I'm asking for the reason why you didn't show up for several days in a row. Well, I have... I, I was have answering a... the question. No, you weren't. So now is your time to answer okay. it. Okay. What's the answer? Since the contract went longer than we expected, I did take additional work. We have to pay workers, we have to pay for equipment, rentals. Okay, that, that makes just no sense to overhead. me. Surely I'm not the only person who doesn't understand what you just said. Since her contract is running longer than expected. Can, can I answer that? You took on additional projects outside of her contract instead of finishing yeah, hers? Yeah, I'm, I'm able to run two or three jobs at the same time. I don't have to necessarily devote all my time to her job. Mm -hmm. I have to I have to satisfy other customers as well as her. So do you think that in it's order to keep my business going, mm -hmm. I have to keep everybody happy. Well, do you think it's appropriate for you not to show up for seven days in a row, sir? Well I'm not punching a time clock. I mean I I I can make her I can make her aware of my absence. Yeah. Okay, and so when there's a deadline which we would and, have completed, you, absolutely. And, no, let me finish. When there's a deadline... That is the issue. Lose the attitude. You understand? Yes. You have one more time to get smart with me before I put you out. Because I'm being nice right now. You don't want to get me upset. <laughs> I'm doing my job, which is asking questions. All I want to know are the answers to the questions I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have an opportunity to speak our side of it and the delays that she caused? There is a deadline in this contract. That deadline was not met. It was met. She fired us before she allowed us to meet it. We were, the last text we have is, she said, when will you show up? We said 9 o'clock again the next day. She wasn't there. I haven't there. made phone calls to we try to make repeating. arrangements so when I could go next. So this contract was for $8,000. You say at some point you paid them the rest of the money? Yes, on August... So you paid them a full $8,000? Full $8,000. If there were such issues with him making excuses, how do you get to the point where you pay another $4,000? That doesn't well, make a lot of sense to me. Can I, I I'm, I'm asking Ms. Harris. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I totally agree. And looking back on it, I'm, I'm thinking I look pretty crazy. When we finally finished painting the outside, which, in all fairness, the outside looked good, at that point, You've I had conversations with Sharon, and who is, if I may say, a really good con artist. She begged me. She said, I know... 
Gary has trouble communicating. I know Gary doesn't delegate well, but I'm going to send help. I was help. trying to give you the benefit Actually, of the doubt. Actually, you were so emotional. Gary's Ms. words Ryan. were. She was so Ms. emotional Ryan. through the whole Wait, thing. You, let me tell you. I, could, you I was, had to hold her hand through the whole thing. Okay, stop talking. Stop talking. Go I ahead, will, and then uh, I will let you. I will, stop I will let you have an opportunity to respond. Go ahead. Um, Gary done. used the term. If I can't get it done, I can hire some Mexicans to get it done. That was a little bit offensive to me, but those were his words. I asked Sharon if they had plans to hire anyone to assist with the job, and she said, "Don't worry about it. I've already hired someone to clean up the debris that we left in your backyard." from where they pulled that. down old I never said that. wood. And she said I that, that she would that. make sure Gary no, had... Okay, Miss Ryan, tell me what, what happened. What was that conversation? You ordered me to stop talking. You know I what? Stop talking. No, Listen, no. when no. I... Goodbye, you can go. Goodbye. Get out. Whoa. Just leave. Get out of here, Gary, we're going. Coming up on Judge Faith. How much work is too much? I don't need your wife here for this because these text messages speak for themselves. Patrice, took truck in, not drivable, thought it'd be a quick fix, but I'm waiting for a part. I'll keep you updated. Fast forward a few days later, sir. I didn't want to take a chance with the rain. All is well. I will be there tomorrow. Plaintiff Catrice Harris says that after paying the defendant the full $8,000 to fix up her property, he failed to complete the work by the agreed upon deadline. Defendant Gary Friley claims that the plaintiff kept adding additional work, which prevented him from fulfilling their contract. Sir, if you would like to finish your case, I'm going to hear what you have to say. Sure. Go ahead. Um, I can sum it up real simple. Please do. The, there was a lot of rotten wood, as the contract states, <clears throat> that when you start something, <laughs> something like this, it's all unforeseen. So therefore, it took a little longer outside than I anticipated. From there, the paint took longer because it took more paint. There was bees that had to be removed. That was, I told her I would do that for nothing so she wouldn't have to get another exterminator in there. There's a lot of work that I did that wasn't in the contract that was for gratis work so that I'd get a good review on this thumbtack. Um, after the outside was done, I moved on to the inside. <clears throat> and so because it took me so long, I had to get other work in order to keep my business going and pay my bills and whatnot. But to sum it up, the job would have been done. I had five days left. The job would have been done before her mother came and I mean, that's all I have to say. So, Ms. Harris, do you have photos of the condition your home was left in after you say you terminated your contract with the defendant? Yes, ma'am. And May I, I would not those? have terminated the contract with him um, had he shown... When I gave him that final... this, If I can go back to the question you asked me a moment ago, um, the final $2,000 was to be paid once the work was completed. He came to me and said that he was going to be evicted from his home. And if there was any way I could pay the, the final $2,000 early, he promised to have the work done within three days before the following Monday. And did you tell her that? Uh, it, there was a lot of said between listen, her I, and listen, I. Listen, I don't think she's making that up. Let's look at the photos. So this is how he left my backyard after he finished the exterior. And when he and Sharon promised, and I have their text message conversations, they promised to send someone to clean up my backyard. They Next never photo. did. That all this is how done, he... that all that brief gets done at the end of the job, when all the material from the inside and outside is done, and then at the end of the job, everything's picked up, cleaned right. up. Right, and you're and saying you didn't away. have the opportunity because yeah, you were that terminated. that was all on a pile in the backyard. Next photo. I came home. He was supposed to come back and finish painting. This is how he left one of the bedrooms painted. And that's free work there. No, that's not. Yes, that was it included is. in the contract. It's not even okay, in the let's contract. go to the next photo. Oh, my goodness. Let's go to the next one. And that's, that's an example of the flooring that was cracking because he didn't lay the flooring properly and tight enough, and the second contractor had to fix that. I don't need your wife here for this. One, because she's rude and I don't like her. Okay? Well, she's... Two, two, because these text messages speak for themselves, what? okay? These text messages are between you and her, and they speak for themselves. No, a lot of the text messages she wrote, I don't text. Judge Faith, may I say one, one more thing about that last payment? 
Um, he agreed that if I paid the 2000 early, that he would throw in an extra dining room and hallway area with paint. It was after that 17th that he failed to show up for the following seven days, which was outlined in the document I gave. So if he'd planned to complete the work, he, he would have shown up, is my point. Do you have proof that you paid another contractor yes, work on the same area? Would you please submit that to the court? Here's the issue after reviewing the text messages with you and or your wife, sir. June 24th, text message from this side. Catrice, took truck in, not drivable, thought it'd be a quick fix, but I'm waiting for a part. I'll keep you updated, I apologize. It's one day. Two days later, I will not be able to see you today before you go to work. I'll see you after work. She expresses concern because that's not enough time for you to be there to get work done. Fast forward a few days later, text message from you. I will be there tomorrow to do garage doors and caulk Thursday. I will paint. I apologize for the delay. This is another day you didn't show up. She's texting you, asking you, prompting you, what's going on? When is this going to get done? When is that going to get done? And I was answering her. The next day, right, but... but you and don't I'm glad text. that you're responding to her text messages, sir, but that's not the problem. The problem is you're not responding, you're not being responsive in doing the work in a timely manner. According July to July 4th, her or me? you're a no-show. Thank you for picking up the paint. I will see you the next time. She gets home. Gary, I'm home. Did something happen today? I didn't want to take a chance with the rain. All is well. I will be there tomorrow. <laughs> Fast forward a few days later, sir. The, the garage, didn't get a chance to finish. My truck was there. More is wrong than I expected. I'll let you know tomorrow. Two days later, I'm fixing the truck and headed to the doctor, as I mentioned. <laughs> then, this is where it gets really troubling because she sends a message and she really lays out everything that's going on here. And she's being a lot nicer than I would have been, just so you know. Because 12 days have gone by, she's paid you in full, and apparently, no, after she she's paid you, after she's no, repaid, she didn't. sir, she paid you the entire amount for this contract, correct? In, in different segments, yes. Right. She gave so me 4,000, 2,000, and then 2,000. In the middle of there, she gave me a 2,000 draw. And when I asked for that 2,000 draw, I thought she was going to have a heart attack in her front yard. She started yelling and hooting and hollering. Even the neighbors saw that she was screaming and yelling at me because I asked for a second draw. Okay, so you got a total of $8,000, sir, am I correct? In different increments, yes. I don't care about the increments. You got a total of $8,000, yes or no? Yes. Okay. After she's paid you in full, you don't show up. Coming up, Judge Faith Rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. Sir, what's your counterclaim about? I could have, I could have um, lined up more work, but instead I was waiting on a response for her of when I could go back to the house with other people to finish it. I could have had that house finished within the time period before her mother came. Right, if you had showed up the days that you were supposed to show and up. And even the five right. days, even the five days that I had left on the contract. Why are you suing for $2,000 in addition to the $965? It costs $965 for you to hire yeah, a new the contractor. $2, don't the interrupt work me was while I'm talking. Done. You know what? I don't see how you dealt with them for two months. I can't deal with you for another two minutes. Your counterclaim is dismissed. Judgment for the plaintiff, $2,965. <laughs> If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.